Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to mark out a set of stairs. It's gonna be noisy, this job. We're right next to the train station. By the end of this video, you should be able to go away and mark out a set of stairs for yourself. Things we need, tape measure, we need a pencil, we need a level. I like to use a digital level and I'll show you why, super handy. And lastly, I just use a line laser just for projecting levels basically. But you don't need that, it just makes it a little bit easier. And the other thing you must have is a chalk line. So this is it, stairs start down here. They come up and then we've got a landing and then they come up here again. There's key bits of information we need from the plans. What we need to know is the position of the first rise and the last rise of every flight. And we get that from the plans. Um, on the architectural plans, they'll give us dimensions for that. The heights, we kind of have to work that out ourselves and check that because for that, we need to find the overall height and divide it up by how many rises they're asking for. These days, generally the plans are pretty good, but I remember 10 years ago, um, you would have to modify it a lot more than you do now. So we check that. Uh, the other bits of information we need will come from the engineering plans. So what we require from there is how thick, how thick the concrete needs to be, which is called the throat or waste. That's this on the plan there where it says 160 throat. So it's the distance from the bottom of the tread to the soffit. The other bit of information we need from the plan is whether there is tow-in. So I don't know what they do in other countries, but here in Australia, to get extra room for your foot um, and to fit stairs in tighter locations, they'll put an angle on the step so that your toe has more space. It's called tow-in. So this job has it. So that's all the info I need, I can start marking. By the way, if you have any queries on any of the tools I'm using, check down in the description and I've got links to purchase all of these items. I haven't got everything in there. You know, things like the level, things like my German lat hammer, which I think every former carpenter should be using. They're incredible. The hook is designed for turning props. So you've got a lever for turning props. It's got a nail holder. The long flat surface actually comes in handy. The point is great for grabbing timbers, grabbing items off the ground, you know, making sure no one ever picks on you. And yeah, it's an e-swing. It's a beautiful hammer, well weighted. Yeah, anything I can get on there, I'll put in there. Jump on there, buy it. Spend some money, make your life better. So I've got a landing measurement of 11.10. Just gonna mark the other side. Now we're gonna find out our riser size. So the plan is asking me to start one course down, 86 mil. Top of this brick is soffit height, soffit for the suspended slab. Two five seventy eight, And then we have our two course slab here, which is 172 mil. So we add that to this measurement. We now know our overall is 2750, but by how many stairs? So I refer to the plans, there's 16 rises. So we divide this overall by 16 rises. That's a rise of 171.81. Now I need to know the going, the, the length of each tread. It's 250. So what we know now is that there's eight, eight rises per flight, so eight and eight. So there's seven goings per flight. There's always one less. So seven times 250 is 1750. So I've got my measurement there for the top step. I can come back 1750. So I've got a line here. That's the first step. I just gotta get the height now. So that is ground level. We need to come up our first step, 171.8. We've got our line here, but we just need a top height for this step here. A lot of different ways we can do this. It's eight rises, so let's just time our rises by eight. 13.74, and I'm gonna level that across.
Now we can ping a line. I think my chalk line's about to die. This is something I've started doing in all my jobs now. I draw the triangle. So my rise was 171.81. My going is 250. I need to know this, because on the line I just pinged, that's gonna be the divisions. So I just use my triangle calculator. 171.81, 250. And the other thing I'm gonna use is the, I'm gonna write down the angles, because I use that. So we've got 303.35. So I'll show you shortly why I use the angles, but a hint, that's where the digital level comes in. But down here, I've got my chalk line, which is representing the top of each step. With what I just worked out from the triangle, I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna mark out the division. 303.35. And then we can plumb down these points. So now I'm gonna show you the first shortcut of using a digital level. So I've marked out one step here. I need to mark out the toe in. So a way I used to do it is you just get your level, line one side of your level up with the top, the other side of the level with the bottom, draw a mark. That works good, but the issue with that is I've had to mark this, mark this before I can mark the toe in. And I have to mark that toe in line to be able to put my steps in, because that's the line my steps go to. But how's this for a shortcut? So I'll just measure one toe in here. So I'm gonna go a, I'm gonna go like a 22 mil toe in. Now, put your level on the marks and read what the degrees are, 83.6. So I'm now gonna write that down. So now, every time I mark a division, I no longer need to plumb down and mark the whole step to get my toe in. I can just come from my intersecting line here, come down at 83.6 degrees and I've got my toe in. Show you here, 83.5 is Close enough, boom, done. I didn't even need to mark the plumb line. Now I've got my little scribe mark here. That's where it intersects with my chalk line. Now I'm just gonna go 83.6 degrees. Done. So I've finished marking that side. I'm gonna show you the rest on here. It's gonna be a bit easy to show. And I might have made a mistake and had to remark some stuff over there. I'm gonna blame it on uh, being distracted by the camera. First thing I'm gonna do is carry my height from that side over to this side with my laser. People complain sometimes when stairs aren't perfect, but it's like you got an angled line and the rise landing right on that join you can't mark it. Anyway, so what I've got here, I've got the top of the first step. Now we need to mark the top up there. It's exactly on this brick and we're gonna be 172 above, right there. Now we can mark things out the same as what we did over there. We've got our divisions worked out already, 303. So I'm gonna mark that out. From those intersections, I'm gonna mark the rises on the angle for the toe in, 83.6 degrees, which I worked out earlier. Okay, so this stair's a suspended slab staircase. There's, you know, it's concrete suspended in midair. So we have to build an underside to these stairs. So I've got my top marked. I've got my angled toe in line marked. So now what we need to do, mark the soffit and it's got a 160 waist throat. So we need to mark that out. So it's very straightforward. We just mark one step fully. Because when we mark the waist, it needs to be from the back of the toe, like on the bottom of the step. So on the plan it said 160, I always go five mil more so that we're never under. There are engineers here who like to pick on that. So I'm gonna go 165, and if we come perpendicular from our angled line, 165, and then, so I don't have to mark out another step lower down, what I do is I just then measure the overall, 325, and then what I can do is mark a point here, point down there, and ping a line. But for the purpose of this video, and something I've been doing a lot lately, is I'm gonna use the digital level, because I need to mark my soffit line so that I can see where it intersects with the deck, the suspended slab deck, because, yeah, I need it marked so I can work out the length of all my joists. So we had 34.5 degrees. And believe me, this is accurate because 
when you're like myself working on your own and depending on what surface you're working in you can't always ping a line on your own and even when I'm doing what I'm doing here where I bang a nail in a concrete nail and then I ping a line you don't always get the concrete nail exactly where you want it it's never as accurate as somebody else holding the line or doing this so anyway I need 34.5 degrees 34.5 mark that there this is now my soffit line mark. I'm gonna plumb the end down, because I need that for my cut. I mark out my ply thickness. So now I've got an intersecting point where I can measure my joist for when I build this. Um, now I just need to do the bottom and I'll do the same thing in reverse. Okay, what I've got here, I've got my steps marked. So what we worked out from before was we need 325, and then it's 34.5 degrees. How easy was that? I feel like I do things a little bit differently to everyone else because I've never seen anybody use one of these, for example. Often I buy things that are useless and I never use them again. But this, every form worker should go out and buy one of these, trust me. Another benefit of doing it the way I'm doing here where you mark the triangle, get the degrees. If you're working to an angle that it should be, if it doesn't work out, you're giving yourself another item that can pick up an error. Yeah, I mean, if you put your put your level on at the degrees that it should be and then it starts getting skinny somewhere, something's wrong. It's a clear indicator. So yeah, super useful. I'm just gonna mark the other side. Uh, don't really have to, but definitely makes it quicker when you're putting the risers in. And the back break, the back breaking part about building stairs is putting the risers in. You know, if you're doing one every now and then, no issue. But when you're doing a set of stairs every day, sometimes two or three sets of stairs in a day, it takes a toll on your back. It's actually quite hard work. And you're standing on, often you're standing on an angled soffit. So your legs are jammed in between other stairs that you've built. When I mark the second side, I don't even have to get my tape measure out or my level. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like my videos. Helps me release more, show some love. There'll be way more cooler videos coming up. I just, yeah, haven't been able to make them yet, but they'll come. Yeah, in the future, I'll be able to show you spirals, massive curved stairs, curved walls, all these sorts of things. And hopefully my videos inspire some other people to get out there and make some videos like this because it'd be awesome to see other people doing the same stuff and what cool little tricks they've learned. There's not many old boys around anymore showing us these things and the old boys weren't able to use some of these modern techniques. There's plenty out there now and yeah, I'd love to see what other people are coming up with. Let me know in the comments too. Let me know in the comments if you've come up with anything cool for any tricks for doing these sort of things. Yeah, peace out. That's the wrong way, peace.